I think the challenge for me would be to do a uh, sympathetic character. And it's not something I'm dying to do necessarily, or I don't necessarily, maybe I don't have, even have an idea of how that would go. But because I've now, some review just said, like, I am like the the go-to uh, horrible, uh, you know, mid 40-year-old white douche bag, like asshole. Like that's my, that's my bread and butter. You know what I mean? Like that's where I can really just kind of be in my comfort zone. So the challenge as an actor would be to like, well, let's see what I can do with, with a character that you're supposed to like. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Tim Heidecker is an actor. On the occasion of the opening of his new film, Mr. America, he sat down with me in New York City to talk about the work. Seeing this movie, Mr. America, really was like, wow, I don't think you were in a comedy space to make this kind of movie 10 years ago. You know, oh, for sure. But is this a conscious evolution of your comedy? Were you always trying to get to this kind of performance level where you're working at, at lowercase f mm-hmm. funny? Yeah. At the very beginning of uh, my career with Eric, you know, we were doing a cartoon called Tom Goes to the Mayor, which I think is actually my performance in that as, the, as Tom is very small and very dry and it comes from our love of Christopher Guest and, you know, understated, very understated stuff. And then, but we also had this love of, of the absurd and of loud and of, and, and Eric and I's creative collaboration often is hyper ironic, hyper cartoonish and yeah. big. And that was the choices we made a lot of times in Awesome Show and playing things ironically and and big but there are even seen there are moments in that show where it's the idea is to be small but it's all all, ultimately it's it's satire and it's absurdity and it's not really about dramatic performance um so much um you know it's all the stuff i've made there's a there's a uh an intention to be truthful about uh what the end product should be um so, with, so with with this movie and with on cinema, um, there where's a, there's somewhat of a desire to be to have a, to have some realism in the performance and to, and to make it feel not completely insane. Even though some of the in, in some of the situations and some of the the behavioral aspects are uh, outlandish and, and unacceptable, yeah. you want it to feel real. You don't want it to feel like a sketch. Yes. You know, a, a um, you know, a Saturday Night Live sketch or something uh, that you'd see at the UCB theater or something. Um, we just, and, and especially, and I think the evolution that you're seeing in this movie is because the format of the movie is a satire or parody almost of a real documentary, of a straight documentary, and the filmmaker making that wants it to wants it to feel where I've got my guard down and there's there's some vulnerabilities there, then I can uh, turn I can play into that and we can make those kind of choices. And now I'm lucky that I'm also the co-writer and producer, so uh, it's a collaboration and it's choices we make all the way through the process. So we're finding the right take. You know, this a lot of this a lot of my performance comes down to very good editing. You know, yeah, yeah. and finding great little moments that and also taking out the moments that don't feel real right and that don't that feel uh or that where i'm not funny or i'm but i'm imagining mistakes. there was also stuff you took out that was capital f funny like you like you know what i mean like yeah this is one of the only movies where mm-hmm. i can imagine if it's too much on the nose say funny. comedy with a k is another way of saying <laughs> saying that which yeah. i've heard all my life it's yeah. comedy with a k it was always a bad thing it's just it doesn't exist in a real way anymore yes um, it feels very fa- fake and and not funny, you know. So. But even something that 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 might even not even be in that realm of capital K, but mm-hmm. but something that might even be in the realm of like of just a little bit on the absurd side that didn't fit in with the thing, you would have to do it again. So it feels yeah. Is that is that did that well, happen ever? It, 
I'm trying to think. I mean, there was, um, yeah, there'll be moments where I'll like, you know, that sounds too, like, it sounds like I'm um, reaching for a joke or yeah, almost, I mean. you know, trying to be, you know, if we feel like, oh, uh, this feels a little too, you know, Michael Scott from The Office or yes. it feels a little too, uh, you know, Christopher Guest, who I love and I love those and I do love all those things. But there's a few moments where, you know, if I look into camera, that would be a no-no, you know, <laughs> like because right. there's just certain moves that people have done and they've done it well. And we're trying not to do that. So, yes, um, you know, other stuff where it's like I'm yelling, I'm angry and there's a lot of that. Sometimes that can feel a little sticky. That can feel a little um, too hard to believe. And so you just pair that back. You, like you said, you took, take it again. You discuss but a lot of it is very free flowing and not something that's that's really discussed very much. Yeah. Um, the the I've heard other actors and filmmakers talk about the best work being done when you're in a very comfortable environment and the comfortable environment we create because it's very small uh, production. It's a very small production. It's people that love each other and 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 can communicate freely with each other and support each other yeah so it's it's such a it's such a comfortable environment to 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 improvise and to explore that that's what you're seeing in that movie is me totally at ease yes and not fighting for not trying and not um fighting to find jokes terry terry parks fits so perfectly in this world Mm -hmm. You know, and is so on that level of not overdoing it ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you feel like you're watching that that <laughs> that uh, that Anthony Weiner documentary yeah. that I love for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, but how does that work? Do you, you is it just casting? You just find her. You know that she knows how to do this in that way, or do you you do you mold it down? Do you pare it down? Do you pare her performance down? Well, a little bit of both. We you're always taking a risk. We've always believed in um, not um, not expecting to know how everything's going to turn out. We don't have the money and we don't have the time to really know exactly what we're going to end up getting. You know, we just go, you know, Greg had the great idea of, of finding that woman, the, uh, t that type of woman, that kind of age range, that kind of demographic yeah. uh, to be my campaign manager. And, um, so we auditioned, I don't think we auditioned more than 10 people mm. just be, again, because of budget and because of time and everything. And she stood out, but we still weren't sure, you know, it was still a bit of a, a gamble whether she'd be able to keep up with me and which she would be able to be funny or interesting. And this production was so nimble and so quick we didn't rehearse. We, we talked, Eric, our director talked to her, you know, the night before, here's what we're going for. Here's your backstory. Here's who you are. Uh, yeah. here's your relationship with Tim and he's going to communicate with you and you guys are going to talk and it's going to feel, we want it to feel real and you just need to be reactive. You can, we'll feed you stuff if you feel lost or we'll guide you when you need to be guided. And she was a little scared at first. There was a little like trepidation and probably, you know, if we looked at the raw footage, the first 10 minutes might not be there yeah, yet. Yeah. But suddenly I think she clicked and realized, oh, I can relax. I'm, yeah. with, I'm with people that are here to help me. And I was, you know, I'm acting with her so I can be going in the scene. I can be saying, tell me, ask me this. Yeah. You know, and then quick, you know, just ask me this normally. Well, yeah. You know, um, or tone this down or ask for a glass of wine. You know, I can be, I'm directing kind of in real time with yeah. our director and and that's the kind of freedom we have because we're all trusting each other. Yeah. And and then I think some of it is, some of the great stuff up in the hotel room is is probably a little bit of Terry Parks um, unsure of what the hell's going on mm. um, to some degree, but things were, things move so quickly she was like, she's kind of rolling with it. And yeah. it was... Uh, it works for the and, scene, though, yeah. because if she doesn't know. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff that is totally improvised, totally impromptu of me throwing stuff or having tantrums oh. that weren't really rehearsed or talked about. And it's totally done safely. It's done, event, you know, it's done respectfully because then it's a big laugh once it 
half once it, once we cut and, yeah. and she's like what the hell was that you know and uh, that was amazing how did I, yeah. You know? yeah and thank god we don't tell people some people stuff like that and, and sometimes as an actor i don't want to know everything coming my way mm-hmm. you know like if you're gonna slap me in the face like let's do it don't yeah let me know it's coming yeah kind of thing um so so there's a little bit of uh you know a little bit of experimenting a little bit of uh working on it in real time and then again the editing and it's paring yeah. it down and getting it finding those beautiful moments and our editor is the best mm. and he's you know been doing it with us for years so he knows what we love and eric natanicola he's the director what is your relationship like with him because mm-hmm. i'm seeing this i'm seeing you and 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 greg in the in these things and i'm thinking like I, I, if I was the director, I wouldn't know what my role would be because you guys know it's not only just that you 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 have developed these characters and you have have this stuff down, you have so much backstory from all of this mm-hmm. universal stuff that you guys have done yeah. in this universe, the trial, the the, right. the, the show, ev- yeah. everything. He is our co co creator, you know, co collaborator um, in the writing, in the prep. You know, it's a nice dynamic because he is an enabler of ours. Um, and he defers to us and just, you know, kind of historically has deferred to us, like really with this understanding that this is Tim and Greg's baby and I'm just here to help. I'll share with, I'll, I'll speak freely about what I think should be happening, mm-hmm. but it's nice that it's not like three people having to agree on everything necessarily. It's, yeah. it's there's, there's a little bit of a chain of command that helps get things done, you yeah. know? Like, I think, you know, we might disagree or or have some kind of, you know, un- uncertainty about something. And I can be the one to go, I think we should do this. That's if we need to make this decision. But other than that, you know, in the movie, um, he's the adult. He's the guy that helps prep and get the crew understanding of what we're going yeah. for and organizing with our producer, Andrew Porter, who also is invaluable, who, you know, does all that legwork of making our insanity doable and and for no money you know for very little money and also um yeah he's a he's like the conscience of the thing a lot in a lot of ways he's Mm. the guy watching it and going um you know me saying is that gonna work like do we have that is that enough yes i feel good about that you we have we have what we need we can move on so you, you rely know? on him. You rely on him for that kind of those eyes the on eyes. it, and yeah. The, and then shaping it all the way through. I mean, shaping it from the beginning, where he sometimes he'll write a lot, and then we'll go back and forth. He'll he'll pitch ideas. We'll f- shape it together, and then in editing, he's editing. You know, after the editor does his pass, he's giving. I mean, tons of notes, tons, of, and he's also an extremely talented technical guy. So mm-hmm. he knows how to what format to output things. He knows how to do the post uh, visual effects. Mm-hmm. He, that's, that's the world he came up in. Mm-hmm. So, and he, he just sees it all the way through. He sees it all the way through to making sure that what we're putting out there is the best possible thing it can be. Because you have this backstory, which is not a traditional backstory, it's a lot of episodes where you're playing this character, you guys are both playing these characters. You have this trial that you yeah. did that all constitutes as backstory for you in this movie which yeah. is which which normally would help mm-hmm. would help an actor and i'm and i'm yeah. assuming that if you keep this whole thing going this will add as a ba- as a backstory yeah, it to becomes, yeah it colors how i proceed and is this what you were always hoping for mm. like we're going to take these characters to a place where it the performance is on another level now because I don't have to think about all this stuff. Right. Or I don't have to. I don't have to wonder. We lived this. Yeah, this, yeah. This. That's why we're able to move quickly with it and not uh, not div- not go over and over it. It's it's this. Uh, I've done all the character building already. I can turn. I can you know do a little bit of discussion and writing and think about think about what uh, we want to where we want to take the guy. But essentially, you know, people don't change. You yeah. know, and <laughs> rarely, um, you know. So I we we're okay that that part of this uh, story is is like s- circles and and loops and same patterns and 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 recognizing patterns. So um, you know it's an it's also a sort of an episodic uh, 
trap or an episodic tool. It's like, yeah. you know, we're going to introduce, it'll, you know, new, uh, new schemes and new things, but he's going to be, he's going to be reacting very similarly in this yeah. scene. So, um, I, I, uh, yeah, it felt early on that this is something we could potentially do for a long time because it there's some things that go on for a long time you know the howard stern show this might sound weird but the howard stern show has gone for 30 years it's essentially the same thing <laughs> same dynamics same same relationships right. they change often but it's same uh thing and and for people that are into it you can you can kind of drop in and out of that That's and right. and enjoy it so maybe Still it's like that. i yeah. haven't thought about that as it just came to me that of the analogy there but um you know yeah it's a very and I also am not putting on an, you know, I'm not changing my character from who I am in any kind of like physical way. Well, it's sometimes, you know, we do stuff with the hair and the wardrobe and stuff, but, you know, it's not like I'm putting on an accent and mm -hmm. changing me. It, it's, you know, it's, I'm pretty much who I am, except it's just all the wrong choices mm -hmm. and all the, and just having no respect and no patience and, you know, just stripping away all my social conformity, uh, you know, reasonable behavior that, I've, that I should have as mm -hmm. a human being. <laughs> How in sync are you with Greg? Mm. Like about this, this style of comedy that has evolved. Did somebody have to adapt to it? Well, uh, I feel like we've always been in sync. We've always been, I mean, I, there's probably two or three period, period, two or three moments in eight years where I would pitch something that he said, I don't know if we want to do that. Or he would say something I would, we kind of take care of our own characters, you know? And so like he can get really um, deep in the weeds with where <laughs> Greg's going and what he's into. And he likes writing for that. And I'm usually pitching where my character's going and, and then we develop it from there. But the nice thing is um, we, there is a dynamic where I'm sort of the alpha male in the relationship. And that, that um he's happy to not he's happy to play the mm. the the beta whatever you know and that you know that might not always be the case with a lot of comedians there's a lot of humility in that and going this whole project is going to be much stronger if uh i'm not if we're not competing for the same amount of attention in mm -hmm. a way you know and it, it makes him a sympathetic character in a lot of ways you know, this movie is a very much like me on camera. And if I had another another type of collaborator that is so invested in this, there might be conflict in him being like, well, I should be in this more or there should. Right. But he's in it in the right way. That makes the project, yeah. makes the film work the right way. Mm -hmm. And he's really um, dialed into that and has no ego about it and uh, is very... is is a, as again like a fan of what I'm doing and supporter of what I'm doing and and I'm likewise of his like you know I, I think he's the funniest guy I know um, and we crack each other up you know <laughs> so yeah. it's it's very uh, it's a beautiful thing looking at the show I, I don't know how you guys don't crack up like there must there must be taste oh, you cracking God. up we crack up so much now this is a conflict that Greg and I have because I would be, I would think I'd be, Greg's much more of a pure, uh, a much more pure than I am. I'm a little lazy about it. He's very, he's a strict, kind of a strict uh, uh, view of what should, what people should see and what they shouldn't see. I think that there is probably at least a two hour video of us cracking up that would be so enjoyable but he doesn't watch. want anybody to see. But that. I think he's more protective of the the world, and yeah. and I, I I I am happy to to not release. You know, I think it's fine. But um, yeah, we we um, because it's improv, and because when you're saying something for the first time, you're hearing it for the first time, <laughs> and so you yeah. know you there's shit that we say on that show that. Uh, that just makes us crack up and it's it's happened it happens a lot but it's like you're writing in real time so you say something that makes you laugh and then you pause and then you say it again and yeah. maybe you don't laugh sometimes you laugh again <laughs> but you eventually get it and you'll see if you watch the show closely enough i think i see it at least you can see there are scenes Cracks. where i have i have tears in my eyes 
or I've gone a little red and you hear a little like the little shake in my voice as I'm trying to not crack, you know? Yeah. But um, there's sort of a dangerous energy to that that I like. There's an audience that's going to be watching over four hours of the trial yeah. at the Museum of the Moving Image. I hope they uh, um, go to the bathroom before that and don't get a big, large Coca-Cola. When you think about people watching that in one long thing, yeah, like like, well, th- does that frighten you, or does that, or does that delight you? Like, well, the- I've I've certainly experienced certain things that way. I've experienced like uh, the staircase, the the uh, documentary Love six that part, one, yes. yeah. I mean, I think we watched that in one night because it was just so compelling, and we just, you know, you wanted to keep watching yeah. it. We've, I've certainly had, you know, depressing winter nights watching ten episodes of The Sopranos. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, we didn't intend it to be watched that way. We intended yeah. it to be something that unfolded over the course of a week, so you'd watch like an hour a night. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be curious. I, just, I mean, it, <laughs> I love when this stuff gets sort of out of our control. And it's yes. out there in the world. I don't have to worry about it. It's like the the museum decided on that. We said, you know, all the best to you. You know. <laughs> I'm thinking about the moment when when you play the whole song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> moments like that where it's just well, the joke. The yeah, song. there's always there's often timing jokes. I mean, there's like t- testing the audience jokes. And yes. one, my favorite one that I think we've ever done is in Mr. America, which is. The me- dictating the memo to to Terry uh, to to Tony, and yes. the we were just, I mean, Greg and I were just begging our editor and Eric like, please do not, can we keep this as long as possible? Like, let's not sac- like we know it's it's a challenge, but yeah. it gets funnier, it compounds on itself, yeah. and um, so I like playing around with that. And it also feels like it's it's in a territory where you're you're not really sure. If the audience is going to laugh, mm-hmm. like y- y- you might laugh at it, but you're really not sure if it's going to g- how how it might be yeah. read, and it might be read in different ways in different rooms. Yeah, I mean, we had our first taste in L.A. on Wednesday, uh, or I'm sorry, on Friday of last week. We had a big screening of the movie with about 700 people there, mm. and it played really well and got lots of laughs where we laughed at it, you know, in mm-hmm. the right ways, and and mm-hmm. and it felt had an inertia to it that was really um, um, moving to us because we 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 experienced it with a lot of people the way we experienced it in the editing room you know Mm -hmm. and um that was very satisfying now there's people some people that review movies for a living that don't have a sense of humor about it and don't aren't whatever for whatever reason they are not into it yeah they don't think it's funny well, sorry, you know, it's, what are you going to do? Yeah. It's confusing. It's a little, it's confusing to me because I think there's some universal things that are funny about it. Yes. But boy, people are not into my shtick. And you think that critics would be uh, aware enough to understand that it's a little bit ahead of us. And yeah. that's what is good. That's what good comedy is. I know. That's what's frustrating. It's like you should maybe check in on yourself if this is bothering you so much. Yeah. What am I missing that that's I... A, that's a good you point. Know, I mean, yeah. But, uh, you know, there's... A, luckily, if it was everybody shitting on it, you know, I could maybe feel like, oh, maybe we blew it on this one. But it feels like there's a nice mix of people that are really, you know, recognizing it for what it is. Is there anything that you want to do that you haven't been able to do yet, comedy-wise? Like, is there is there a certain style... Or, or, or maybe mm. it's just you acting, you know, not you know, necessarily creating. I, I think the challenge for me would be to do a uh, sympathetic character. And it's not something I'm dying to do necessarily, or I don't necessarily, maybe I don't even have an idea of how that would go. But because I've now, some review just said, like, I'm like the, the go-to uh, horrible, uh, you know, mid-40-year-old white douche bag, like asshole like that's my that's my bread and butter you know what i mean like that's where i can really just kind of be in my comfort zone so the challenge as an actor would be to like well let's see what i can do with with a character that you're supposed to like yeah um and some of my you know i think that's a little tiny bit in this movie because of the tony stuff you know and there's a little bit of this like i like turning that on a little bit and 
seeing a vulnerability and seeing something that might be human about this character. But yeah, I think it would be interesting to try to, it would, couldn't probably live in this show unless things made a very radical change in sort of the way we think about these characters. But um, yeah, I mean, I love, I also love more traditional things like, you know, the seventies movies with Steve Martin where yeah, you're sort yeah. of like, he's a, I, I like that guy. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's funny, but he's also not a jerk. Yeah. Although he is a jerk in the jerk. He's the jerk. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank and, you. Uh, and I'm very interested in where you're going with all this and, and I'm, I'm going to keep watching. Great. Thanks, man. Nice talking to you. Tim Heidegger, thank you. You're thank welcome. Thank you so much. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.